We're going to begin our look at output by uh, using a standard Windows Form program. There's two standard ways to display text in a Windows Form program, the first of which is what's called a label. A label is just another type of control that we can add to our form. So again, I can drag one over, I can add it to our program, and the first thing we do, as usual, is we go up and we rename it. Now I'm just going to show a message on here, so I'm just going to call it LBL because we need to prefix all of our visible elements with a three-letter prefix, and LBL is the prefix for label. Let's call it label message. Now, that's great, but all it shows right now is label one. How do we actually change the text inside of label one? Well, there's two ways. The first and easiest way is in the designer. So at design time, we can go down, we can go down the text property, and we're going to change the value of label one to hello world. As soon as I click enter, you can see that it's been updated there. But then there's a second way, and this is where things start to give us control as programmers. It allows us to change and manipulate and do things within our program, not just when we're designing it, but actually while the program is executing. So it may not actually change the value of the text ever, unless the user interacts with it in some way. Now the first thing you need to realize, interaction with a label is not really allowed. It's not supposed to occur. A label is for display only. I should never ever be clicking on a label or anything like that. Think of a label like a street sign. You look at it, you read it, but you never change it. So how do we actually work with it then? Well, we need some type of interface element to do that for us. So let's try a button. So I'm just going to create a button. And again, I'm going to rename it. The prefix for button is btn, btn show message, or let's call it btn change message. Two S's. So what does that mean? Well, right now, let's quickly change the text on this to change so we can actually give ourselves a better interface here. And we're going to manipulate the side of it, the size of it a bit. If I can click on it, there we go. So how do we actually do anything? If I run my program right now, you'll see that no matter how many times I click on change, it does nothing. Our program is useless at this point. So we want to add functionality to this. Well, how do we add the functionality to that change button? Well, we can do it a number of different ways. The best and most robust way is to click it and select it. And then over in the properties panel, choose a little lightning bolt for events. When you choose it, a whole series of possible events can occur for that button. An event is essentially, what can a button do? Well, or how can the user interact with a button? Something along those lines. Um, in our case, a button can be clicked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and right to the right of this click event, I'm going to double click on here. And what it's going to do is it's automatically going to create a section of the code inside a form demo app to allow us to manipulate what happens when the user clicks on that button. We know this because this name right here, button change message underscore click. What this means is whenever somebody clicks on the button that is named button change message, do any code that lies within this opening brace and this closing brace. These braces are also called parentheses or curly brackets. So in between these two curly brackets, whatever code lies in here, whether that's one line or five million lines, will get executed every single time that button is clicked. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do one line. And how do we do that one line? Well, we got to go over and we got to decide what we're going to do. Well, we're going to change the text that shows up on Hello World on the Hello World label. So I got to remember what this label is called. Well, it's just LBL message. So in order to interact with it in the code, I need to refer to it by its name. Just like in class, if I were to ask somebody to take down the attendance, I might refer to them by the name and say, Steve, could you please take down the attendance? Now, if there's more than one Steve in the classroom, I need to be very specific. So Naming is very important. In this case, we know that it's called LBL message. And you'll notice that as I'm typing, this little blue box appears. This is called IntelliSense. Let me just back that up again. Um, IntelliSense means an intelligent sensing of what I'm trying to type. So if what shows up is what I'm looking for, I can just click the Enter key and it will automatically finish that. The next thing I need to do is I need to realize what property of the label I'm changing. 
Well, if you remember in the designer, in order to change it to hello world, we had to change the text property. Oops. I got to make sure that I am on the proper view, on the property view, properties view, not on events. And down here on the text property is hello world. Well, that's the same property I want to change in the code. So back in the code, I need to write the text. So if I type dot, all of the possible properties that label message can modify and change automatically appear. That dot means ownership, so things that are owned by label message. In this case, we're looking for text. So when I type it in, I typed in a T. So it's going to start narrowing things down. Notice that what I typed was lowercase t e x t. That's a problem. C sharp is what's called a case sensitive language, which means lowercase and uppercase are not the same thing. It needs it to be specific. So I need to make sure that I use an uppercase t e x t here. Otherwise, it will not work. I'll get an error message. So what do I want to do with that text property? Well, I want to give it a new value. The word that we use is assign. So I'm going to assign it a new value using an equal sign. So whatever goes on the right hand side of this equal sign is then going to be stored in that property, that text property of label message. So in this case, I'm going to write hi world. Now notice the, the, the code here, what you're actually seeing here. What you're seeing here in the syntax is an equal sign, which means give it a new value. Whatever's on the right hand side of that equal sign will be stored in that text property. And we have the text high world. We know it's text because it's surrounded in these quotation marks. If I didn't put it in these quotation marks, I would get an error because it would think that it's something else. But in this case, we're going to put this down here to make sure that it works. And finally, any statement inside of C sharp, any program or any command needs to end in a semicolon. Think of it like ending a sentence with a period we must end it with the proper punctuation. So that's it. So if we go back to our design view and we run our program, we'll notice that we have a program working now. If I click change, it says hi world. No matter how many times I click change, it's always going to say hi world now. It is still executing that one line of code, but that one line of code is always changing it to hi world. So it's never going to change back or anything like that. That's all it does. So that is how to manipulate a label, both in the design view as well as in the code view.